It's been a while since we've done a hacks video here on GMBN Tech, so today I'm going to share with you a whole bunch of hacks using all of this stuff uh, that I've been using kind of on and off over the years, really, to work around problems that arise when you're working on bikes. Hopefully there's going to be at least one or two things here that are going to be helpful for you. Okay, the first one is actually referring to a product, and this is it, it's elastic cyanoacrylate. Now, cyanoacrylate pretty much is super glue. You get various different options on the market that you will see. Now, the thing with super glue that you can't use in the application I'm gonna tell you about is it's actually quite brittle once it's formed that bond. So you can still use it, but it won't make a permanent fix. Now, what I'm talking about here is when you get slashes in your tire. Now, yes, by all means, you're gonna be able to stab a worm into those and sort of fill that void, but quite often, they don't actually completely seal and you might lose air over time on the ride. So this stuff, the elastic version of a cyanoacrylate, basically means you can use it with rubber and things that move. And I've been using this on trainers and on my tires for some time now, and it's absolutely brilliant. So here's the theory, so for a number of things. When you're cleaning your bike, you should be inspecting your tires, and any little cuts and nicks you see in those tires, they can grow when you sort of ride over stones and thorns and anything. So fill them in with some of this stuff, and it'll make your tires last longer. And also, if you have had to use a trailside solution to repair a slash in your tire with one of those plugs, when you get home, you can neaten it up and make it a much more permanent fix by using some of that. It's awesome stuff. Uh, next up is one of my favorite additions to my home workshop, Gorilla Tape. This stuff is super useful for a number of things. Now, a lot of bike packers out there will actually keep some of this on the bike uh, because over time, you're gonna find something's gonna rattle loose, maybe a cable tie holding a hose comes loose and your rear brake hose, for example, might rattle on your tire, something like that, you can secure it with some of this. And once it's on your bike, you can unpeel it and reuse it, which is quite useful stuff. Now, what I've always done is secure a chain link, like a master joining link on my handlebars on a bike. Some people do this in various places on the bike, but I use this stuff for it because I know it will stay sticky and I will be able to reuse it as well as storing that chain link on the bike. It also makes a fantastic, despite what many people will say, a fantastic option to use in place of proper tubeless rim tape. Now, yes, Tubeless rim tape is certainly better and it's gonna get a better seal and it's gonna last longer. But if you haven't got any or you need to make a repair to your existing rim tape, this stuff will do the job. It works really, really well. And lastly, just to prove how versatile the stuff is, I actually made this little mini saddlebag entirely out of Gorilla Tape. It's literally, it's a waterproof bag basically. Got a little stick on Velcro patch on here that I made and it's got a little Velcro hook and loop strap, and on the inside, as you can see, you've got a CO2 cartridge, tire lever, and a little, little adapter in there. And it goes under the saddle, nice and easy. You can make one of those with some of that, and it'll cost you almost nothing. Awesome stuff. Okay, the next one is more of a little tip I've picked up over the years on how to sort of neaten up the cockpit on your bike. Now you might have found if you've ever shortened the brake hoses on your bike or you've installed a fresh setup onto your bike, that when you actually go to secure that compression nut that goes against the olive to secure the seal on there, that when you tighten that up, you actually find that the hose can twist. Now, of course, it's binding, so there's two ways around this. The obvious one is to sort of pull the hose the opposite way slightly before tightening the nut against it, and then hopefully you've got it in the right position. And the other one, dead simple really, is to put a tiny dab of grease on the non-brake side of one of those olives, uh, obviously you'll have your compression nut in place on there, just to make sure it doesn't bind when you tighten. That's all you've got to do, super simple. Now I've actually seen a number of mechanics doing this and it's honestly, it's changed my life with, with certain brakes that have just been a pain. I'm sure more than a few of you will have had this problem. Uh, now one additional tip within that is if you're using say, for example, a SRAM brake or an older Avid brake that uses dot fluid in there, when you put the grease in there, try and use some dot grease because that way it won't be eaten or sort of won't have any issues with the corrosive dot fluid in there. But yeah, super simple little tip and it works a treat. Okay, chains, we all have them on our bikes and they all break at some point. Usually when you're far from home or you're sprinting and you have a face plant or whatever. The fact is you've got to fix them to carry on riding. 
Now, yes, you can use a chain tool and you can put a chain back together with the pins that are in it, but you can't expect them to last because they will break. So what you need to do is carry with you an appropriate joining link. Now, there's obviously various different manufacturers on the market. You've got SRAM, you've got Shimano, you've got KMC, it's Connex, there's loads. And they each have their own dedicated joining link. But the fact is, it doesn't matter which one you have. You can use any of these as long as it's the correct speed. You can use a 12-speed SRAM one on a 12-speed Shimano chain. I'm sure that SRAM and Shimano employees might go <clears throat> at this, but it's a get you home hack and it will work. Ideally, yes, to make sure your shifting is as perfect as those manufacturers intended, you want to swap it out as soon as possible for the correct one. But don't sweat it. If you've got one that's the appropriate speed or one of your friends has, you can use it to join your chain. Now, skipping back to the beginning of the video, I always tape one on one of my bikes. And I know if a friend breaks a chain or I break a chain, I'm going to be able to fix it. So just bear that in mind. But don't panic if it's not the right brand. Yes, change it at a later date, but it does mean you can still fix it safely and carry on your ride. Okay, so I've got the little rubber nitrile gloves out. Now, these things are great for a number of different hacks. Now, the first one comes to mind with people who ride in the Northern Hemisphere is keeping some in your riding pack for those inevitable trail side uh, failures. You can say, well, you've got to fix something, you're going to get cold, you're going to get muddy, uh, you don't want your riding gloves to get dirty, so keep some of these in your bag anyway. You can also use these to keep things inside your bag, your phone, for example, if you've got a bag that's not waterproof, these will do to keep that waterproof. But they also serve another purpose, which I've referenced in another video uh, way back on GMB and Tech, it's going to be down there about removing bolts that are damaged or rounded out. Now the first port of call I will always do with something like this is use an Allen key that's got a rifled end like these ones. I have a rifled end so it can grip in the head of a bolt that has been rounded out slightly. And if that doesn't work, my next port of call will be an elastic band or a bit of glove. Uh, my preference is to use glove because you can double it up if you need to get a slightly more secure fit. And it just adds enough tension on the head of the Allen key in the bolt there to hopefully get it undone. And it's so far not failed me. I'm sure there's gonna be instances where it doesn't work. And I know that a number of GMBN Tech viewers actually tried this hack after seeing me do it in the earlier video and it worked for them. So I wanted to reshare it because it's simple and you don't have to do anything destructive like drilling the head of the bolt out. Uh, so give it a try if you've got a bolt that's got a head that's slightly rounded and do yourself a favor, just keep some in your riding pack. They'll take up no space and they'll come in handy at some point. Mountain bike free wheels. They can be loud, they can be quiet. Some people love that, some people hate that with either way. So the fact is, they need to be like this because of where the engagement works. You get ratchet style ones, uh, like the one you can see on screen just to shot off, and you get ones that have pulls that engage into little, little tiny teeth. Now, as you'd imagine, they're sprung to engage in those teeth, and that's gonna make that noise, as you hear. Some people love this, like I said, and some people don't, but you can actually choose the amount of noise that it has by the way that you choose to maintain it. Now, of course, each hub manufacturer will have what they recommend down, but something I do recommend checking out is this specific stuff that I actually used pretty much for the first time when I was working with Industry 9, because they recommend it to either silence or maintain their hubs. Now, it's a dedicated free hub oil from Dumond, and this one is a free hub grease. Now, what you want to do, basically, when you're actually maintaining it, you pull it apart, you want to clean everything, clean the surfaces, clean the pools, make sure there's no debris in there. And if you want your hub to sound nice and quiet and muted, use a small amount of the grease on those serrated teeth and a little bit on the pools. If you want it to be nice and loud and punchy, use the oil, and that will keep it maintained as well. It's dead simple. Now, I've done this before with various different oils. I found like a wet lube or an all-weather lube can achieve a similar thing, um, although, you can't beat the correct tool for the job, I will say that. And the same, a suspension grease is really thin and actually not too far off what this specific hump grease is, although this is designed to stay in place, whereas suspension grease, of course, is designed for use on suspension surfaces and around rubbers and things like that. So you can do it with other stuff, but that's a great little hack and you can make your bike sound super loud or nice and quiet. Okay, the next one is I guess you could say it's in place of using a grease. Now, using greases and assembly compounds is obviously essential on bikes uh, to resist corrosion, things like cups staying in the frame where they shouldn't do, but 
There's also a time when you can use other things like PTFE tape. So this is plumber's tape, essentially. Uh, you'll see this used on threads around plumbing to make it a super watertight feature, but also to make sure that you can undo it again. This stuff has worked a treat for me in the past. Do you know what? I don't even know who I picked this tip up from, but it's a long, a long known thing amongst bike mechanics that have been doing this a long time to use this on the threads of a bottom bracket. Now, if you're going to do this, you want to make sure that the threads on the actual bottom bracket itself are completely clean. Don't do this with grease on there or any debris. And you want to make sure you wrap almost in the opposite direction to the way you're going to screw it in to make sure it doesn't undo itself. A couple of wraps around of this nice plumber's tape. Um, you want to make sure it's as smooth as possible when you do this, so you can thread it in. And essentially, it does the job that the grease will do to enable you to assemble it and disassemble it when you need to. But because the tape actually fills more of a void than the grease does, if your bike is subject to a creaky bottom bracket, this almost positively will cure this. I've had this in the past, I've had creaky bottom brackets, and this stuff has been great for it. Give it a try. Okay, this one is a braking hack that I actually picked up from the Instagram account of uh, Pro Mechanic BK, so that's Brad Kelly. Uh, if you don't already follow him, give him a follow. There's a handle floating around down there somewhere for you to check out. Uh, he's actually the Toolbox Wars champ, I think twice now, and he's got just an awesome Instagram page if you like your tools and things. But he had a tip that I didn't realize I needed when I was just by chance looking through his page. Now, I'm sure some of you out there will have had brake pads that drag before, or maybe sticky pistons, things like that. Now, I did have a particular brake, I think it was a code at the time, that did suffer from this. So I basically lubed the pistons like you do with the dot fluid on those, because it's a dot brake, re sort of uh, put, put them back in, so retracted correctly, bled the brake, but I was still suffering from one of the actual brake pads, and it looked like it was catching or not returning. And actually, it made me realize when I saw his hack, which was to file off a tiny amount on both the leading and the trailing edges of that brake pad, uh, because sometimes, just due to manufacturing, the brake pad, whether it's their own brand or an aftermarket one that might have a different paint, for example, on the outside, can just catch. You've got to bear in mind that the tolerances they're made, they're supposed to slide for that caliper, and if they're just the teeniest bit out, which can happen on different batches, they can catch. And it was actually a non-SRAM pad that I had it happening with, and it appeared that the backing plate was painted, I guess, to, so you could identify between um, sintered and organic, or something like that, I kind of forget now, but I tried that hack, and it worked a treat. Granted, it is a niche hack, and you might not ever need it, but if your brake pads are actually sort of not retracting properly and they're sort of just dragging on the side of the, the disc rotor, have a look closer and see if that's what's happening. And if that's the case, a little bit of filing action on the edge of your brake pads will hopefully cure that for you. And another brake pad hack is for rattling brake pads. Now you tend to get this with some brakes on the market. And this is a weird one because I've had this on certain XT brakes and SLS brakes and not at all on the same exact model on a different bike. Can't correlate what that is, can only put it down to the way the brake pads are manufactured. But sometimes the ones with the heat fins on there can actually rattle. Uh, and if you're like me, that would drive you mad. So you want it to be nice and quiet. If that affects you, then there's a few little hacks you can do here. Now, one of them is by getting a very small O-ring and literally, you just wrap it around the pad itself and it takes that void of space up and you can either wrap around all of them but you don't want it to close them in uh, or, or hinder the action and you can hook it around the actual pin that holds it in. I've seen that one used quite a lot although it's quite difficult to get the exact right o-ring or rubber band to do it. It's got to be a really really small fine one to do that. But something I've used uh, and I've seen other people use is either mastic tape uh, which is this stuff so scotch uh, 2228 it's essentially a rubber tape. You can cut a tiny little bit off and just hang it just on the edges of where the brake pad would actually rattle. But something I think is a little bit more reliable than that because you wouldn't want it to stick on there and stop the pads retracting properly is the fluffy side of a bit of Velcro. Now I've seen this on loads of downhill bikes in the pits and I've tried it and it works a treat. You just need the tiniest bit. Obviously your caliper is going to have to be dead clean for this to stick, it has got a sticky back into it. And it does mean that when your bike gets muddy, the mud does stick to this unfortunately, but it will mean that your brake pads won't rattle uh, if that's a problem on your bike. Now this last one is actually genius. Now this was shown to me do you know what, I don't even know. I'm going to say it was Finn at Full Factory. Um, it was shown to me by a mechanic friend. 
and it's a spray lube hack. Now, I don't use spray lubes. I resist using them as much as possible, and I would always recommend using a dropper bottle of lube uh, if you have the ability to get one, because of the fact you can specifically and precisely put a drop of oil on each chain link. You don't get any waste with these, but more to the point, you can't overspray by accident. Uh, what I mean by overspray is if you're spraying the lube on the chain and the mist of that lube goes near your brake rotors, in which case it will contaminate them and then you're going to be stuck in the realm of do you try and sort of rejuvenate them or buy fresh rotors and pads. Not good, yeah. So what you want to do if you are using a spray lube is get a selection of these little caps from your old bottles, put them together, and essentially what you're going to do is build, build a bridge like this. So this side will go on your bottle, and you have to make sure you've got one like this. It's got almost the fine nozzle in the other end that goes into your spray bottle, and that now becomes your applicator rather than out through the, the actual hose. If it comes out through the hose, it's still going to have a mist. But if you come out via here, as you can see when I spray it, it goes really accurately straight onto the links that you want. It's a wicked little hack, dead simple, and it also works really well for water displacer for the same thing. If you want to run it past your chain, your drivetrain after washing your bike to avoid corrosion and drive the water out, that works a treat. Give it a try. Okay, so for this hack, what I want to talk about is the problems that you can run into with the cleats on the bottom of your shoe. The bolts can get corroded and stuck in, but more importantly, the actual head of the bolt can get damaged from rocks and things. And two GMBN Tech viewers came up with great solutions for this that I've never thought of, so I just want to share this because I think it's really cool. So the first one is from Scott Gregory, who suggests getting a candle and a lighter and literally melting some wax and dropping the wax in there. So you can obviously scrape it out, but it fills that void. So it's gonna seal effectively the head of your bolt. I think it's absolute genius. It works really well. I've done this on my cross country shoes, but there's also another one you can do. And this is from Graham D who says, fill those cleat bowls with silicon. So some general purpose bathroom silicon sealant, something like that, the same thing. You can plug those holes, achieves the exact same thing. Uh, I've got to say, I really like the wax approach. Uh, the silicon one though, I suspect, will probably stay in a bit better. And it does mean you can just hook it out after a while when you need to make an adjustment. I think that's absolute genius. Uh, anyone got a better one? I'd love to hear it, but I think they are two of the coolest little hacks I've seen in a long time. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing them to all my shoes. Well, there we go, there was um, 11 and a bit hacks, um, I reckon, from a number of things I've done over the years, and I've also learned from other amazing people out there in the community. So thank you for sharing stuff with me that you already have. Um, big ups, like I said, to BK. Make sure you give him a follow, because the guy is just awesome, the stuff that he shares, so cool. Uh, and as our Toolbox was and all of the mechanics out there, if any of you watching this have benefited from any of these hacks, I'd love to know which ones you've tried, which ones have worked. And if you've got any hacks that we've not talked about, I would love to hear from you in the comments section underneath. Uh, if you don't already subscribe to us, please do click subscribe, share the stuff around. It's free content for everyone that loves bikes and hopefully it's helpful for you. Uh, see you in another video soon. Take care. Ta-ra.